Hey, welcome everyone to this Cradle Conversation. My name is Laura Halpin. My pronouns are she, her. I am recording from Walnut Creek, California, which is on the stolen land of the, the Bay Miwoks. And I'm here today um, to talk to someone that I've actually never spoken with before, and that is Carmen Cool. So Carmen, welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and to be in conversation with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm really tickled. And, um, and like I told you that this is my first conversation that I'm having, a first cradle conversation that I'm having with a person that I haven't spoken with before. And so I really look forward to just kind of riffing with you and see, right. <laughs> see so, what comes. And it so, does actually feel like um, there is already some connection yeah. yeah yeah you don't feel like someone I don't know thank you yeah you know and I think that um because we're keeping some similar company in you know in the social <laughs> yeah. media land um you know I love your friend so I love you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you I've got good I've got good ones I'm honored so I wanted to introduce you. Um, mm -hmm. What I know of you is that you are a therapist and uh -huh. you're working in Boulder, Colorado. Yeah. And a lot of your work really centers around work with your clients around body, mm -hmm. their bodies, their relationship mm -hmm. with their bodies mm -hmm. and coming into a, um, a more trusting relationship with their bodies. So there's a specialty around yeah. maybe clients that are suffering from eating disorders or disordered thinking around food. Mm -hmm. And weight stigma, okay. the trauma of oppression that people come in with around bodies. Yeah, a lot of healing work around that too. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I have really appreciated about your work, and I see you and Hillary Kennedy working this, that mm -hmm. you're really calling on um, practitioners in your field. Yes, that's right. To do their own work, their own body work, so they're not perpetuating harm right. as they're, they're fielding a lot of... Um, yeah, a lot of trauma around bodies. Yeah, I feel so strongly about that. Yeah, yeah. and I really appreciate the way that um, you are toggling back and forth all the time between how someone feels in their own body and how they're experiencing their own body within a system That's right. that is telling them that it's not safe or okay to be in the body that they're in. Yeah, so thank you for that yeah, thank you. back and forth between individual and system. I'm learning from you. Oh, thank I you. really am. Thanks for saying that. Yeah. So if you've seen any of these, you know that the, the Cradle Conversations have four questions. And um, before we begin, I just want to welcome everyone into this space with us. Um, the intention between us that is that this conversation be for the highest good of all involved and that we're seeking to cultivate connection and community and courage and comfort in a time of radical instability and um, one of the reasons that i reached out to you is not only do i consider you a thought leader but and um, also, you have a very um, steady way of showing up in the world, as I as I know know you, and um, and I think we're all looking for that that steadiness, even when it may not feel steady in your own body. Yeah, <laughs> the way that you show up, there's there's a consistency to it that is, um, I think, that is comforting oh, to other people. Thank you. Thanks for. But yeah, I just appreciate you mirroring that back. Thank you. So the first question, Ms. Carmen Cool, mm. <laughs> is what cradles you? I was thinking about that earlier this morning and thinking about the question of what cradles me, what comforts me, and thinking that I am un- 
comfortable right now, right? And not in the way that Nicole, right? Nicole Lee was talking about like just <laughs> being uncomfortable and the importance of being uncomfortable. But I was thinking about cradles and rocking and the soothing quality of that, right? Mm -hmm. Like the way that um, that rocking can soothe jangled nerves. Mm -hmm. and I find that right now I'm really hard to soothe. Mm -hmm. you know, that these are heart tenderizing times and I, I cannot, it's hard for me to find an ability to be soothed or comforted right now. Mm -hmm. um, and even though that that feels true, um, there are some things that I think I, I, I draw on or I go to, um, to maybe help, to help me feel steady um, mm -hmm. when I have a hard time with that. Um, mm -hmm. And one of them, this, this is a big word. I know it's a big word. Um, does it start with C? <laughs> It does it's all about like, C words. But I like the alliteration of that. Yeah, I can, I can play with that. Um, I actually invited you on because you have Carmen Cool CC, you know, I can do <laughs> kind of words. Yeah. My middle initial also is C. Um, Dang. CCC. Mm -hmm. Well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now everyone's going to wonder. So it's Carmen Crystal Cool. There you go. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Anyway, the big word I was going to use is truth. Right, mm. that there is something about mm. wanting more spaces for truth telling, um, whether that's our small truths or our big truths or our truthy truths, you know, just to have room to have that be seen and spoken. Um, and for me to be in a relationship with the truth of my own experience. Mm. Um, and I, one of the mantras that I find myself using a lot right now is I know what I know. Mm -hmm. and and to be clear that doesn't mean i think i know everything mm -hmm. you know quite thanks for quite the opposite. you know <laughs> not at all it's not about mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. but it's about the way that i'm noticing how good i can be at gaslighting myself mm -hmm. look I'm, I'm really way more skilled at that than i thought i was um mm -hmm. and so for me to remember that i know what i know mm -hmm. you know that those 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 little um flashes of knowing or or flashes of truth or the way my body registered some something, even mm -hmm. though my interpretation of it might not be right, my perception of something is. And so if I can lean into knowing what I know, mm -hmm. that helps me quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. I was thinking about the way that um, one of the practices I've been doing lately is going on really long walks, like mm -hmm. literally feeling my feet under me, getting out, um, they are on trails where there's not very many people and I do wear a mask. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, you. I feel like I do what I need to do to be as safe as I can be. And it feels important for me to be out. And mm -hmm. I, I call them photo walks sometimes because I take my camera and sometimes I'm looking for signs or proof of spring. And sometimes I'm just taking a picture of whatever captures my attention. And after one of these walks, I looked at my camera and all of the pictures were of a path. Like there was a mm -hmm. path somewhere in, in, in every photo that I took. And I... I posted some online and, and I posted like the path seemed to be, it's like the words were follow me said the knowing, you know, that, that I can um, practice exploring the edges of boundaries of my center of the connection to my knowing. I can practice paying attention to what pulls me away from my knowing. Mm. Right? What are the, what are the things that get in the way? How do I find myself back? Um, and that that exploration has been a beautiful ride into my essential self, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the things that I draw on right now. Mm -hmm. um, the other, which is another big word, actually, is anger. Mm -hmm. um, and in a way, mm -hmm. I do find that anger cradles me. <laughs> it doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't totally. soothe, yeah. right? It doesn't bring comfort, yeah. but it certainly does cradle me. Yeah. Um, and it feels related, in a way, to knowing what I know, right? Yeah. And the anger oh, yeah. at the things that that want to pull me away um, and learning to pay attention to what it feels like when I cross my own boundaries mm -hmm. you know um, there's a quality of rage that happens it's like when a pilot light gets lit you know like there's this whoosh right and if I can slow down and pay attention to that um, there's a knowing in inside of that that's mm -hmm. worth me turning my attention towards mm -hmm. um, and I've been practicing not moving too quickly away yeah. from rage and grief, um, practicing not using my language to make things more palatable. Mm -hmm. um, but 
yeah i mean it's weird to think of it as a cradle but it really is and it looks like that makes yeah. you know i want to know if that makes sense in some way um it makes yeah. so much sense yeah. it makes so much sense and i think about about anger a lot uh-huh. because i'm angry mm-hmm. yeah hell yeah <laughs> and um and it's not the same like i'm in a bad mood you know, or Mm -hmm. a momentary, but there's just this smoldering that is not going to go away anytime soon. Right. And it's an anger that actually feels necessary. Yeah. Yes. Very necessary and vital and Mm -hmm. um, activating um, Mm -hmm. as an antidote to kind of despair, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. For me Mm -hmm. sometimes right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a, um, the way that we're talking about it and the way that I'm feeling it right now is it feels very active and it feels almost like the, yeah, the, an antidote to despair, um, an antidote to, um, complacency, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love, oh, go ahead. You go. No, I was, I have a couple more things that I'm drawing on, um, but I, okay. if there was something, let's. Well, I just wanted to talk about the, I know what I know, huh. because yeah. it, it brings me back to what Nicole Lee was talking about, that yeah. there is a, there's a knowingness that supersedes facts. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that. That we're moving into this place of facts are, you know, kind of disposable and unreliable Seems, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where are they? I can't keep track of them anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so was, anyway. Um, there was a song I was listening to. I've been listening to blues a lot right now mm. actually and there was a song that came on a playlist that I was listening to. Um, Buddy Guy and Tracy Chapman um, mm. and they were singing Ain't No Sunshine um, mm. and in the middle it's about one minute and 40 seconds in. I timed it so I could find it. Tracy just starts going off on, I know, I know, I know, I know. And she just says that over and over and over again. And I, um, I almost am singing that to myself as a mantra too. Like, I know, I know. I can trust this body's knowing. I can trust my knowing. Wow. I know that, I know. It's a great, it's great. It's a great song too. Um, okay, I'll link to it. <laughs> And then, and then with that actually is, um, you know, I've been in this territory of, of bodies in relationship to bodies for a long time. And I find it suddenly deepening in a way that it hasn't before for mm-hmm. me. So how does my body participate in like, um, how do I want to say this? Like the, I've been exploring the, the shifting of my center of gravity, right? As it relates to boundaries, as it relates to anger and and what happens when my body is I'm leaning forward that I notice I do a lot. I'm doing it even right now, right? And what mm. happens if I come back? And what happens if I lean back? And then what come, mm. happens when I come in? And just kind of physically playing with like mm. what happens inside of my own physiology when I'm, when I'm yeah, front of center mm. or back mm. of center. And, mm. and when my, sh- my center of gravity shifts from side mm. to side or forward and backward and relying on that as a practice actually to to bring myself back. Um, uh, I've been boxing, <laughs> which I, I laugh because it's not something I ever would have imagined I would love, but I, but I do. And, and there's so many metaphors. I could just have a, I could just go off on metaphors about boxing, but there is something about the extension, right? Mm-hmm. Fully extending and then coming back. Um, that also gives me a felt sense of what that means to, to bring my center of gravity back inside of me. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the last thing that I'm doing which feels impossible not to name right now and people who know me on social media know this is a thing um, is every spring I get online and I watch um, I spend time every day (laughs) I don't know why suddenly I'm embarrassed about this Um, but I spend time (laughs) every day watching live eagle cams and I'm gonna end up writing about this at some point because it's so there's something so rich in there but I, I have to watch, I have to watch. I have to watch the mom and dad eagle share parenting duties. I have to watch them incubate the eggs. I have to watch them bring food. I have to watch the, babe, the babies hatch. I have to watch the little bobbleheads like 
learn how to find their center of gravity in the nest. And, and wow. I was thinking that is about so it. interesting. And so uh, who does that? <laughs> Me. I watch the eagles. And, and I've been trying to think about, like, what is it? Besides the fact that I don't normally get to see that, right? Like, what mm. is it that I'm so drawn to? And I was talking to another friend about this. Um, and there is something about witnessing the emergent, right? And witnessing the emergent of the wild that I think captivates me somehow. Um, there's something about that uh, emergence and the nurturance, right? The, the unconstrained. And it makes me think about what's the feral hungry parts of us that don't get seen or supported or cheered on. Um, and I think animals are also very somatically honest. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. And there's an mm-hmm. instinct that they don't get in the way of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they know what they know, mm-hmm. right? They know what right. to do. And it's funny to watch the humans watching the eagles because they'll comment on the, in the chat rooms. I know I'm, I spend so much time there. Um, <laughs> I'm making that be known really quickly. But the humans want to intervene all the time, mm-hmm. right? Like we don't trust the eagles to know what they're doing and, mm-hmm. and they know what they're doing. Their instincts take over, wow. right? Um, so there's something about, uh, you know, a growing commitment also to witness my own emergence then and my own aliveness and notice where my energy is and where it's constrained and where it's constricted and as much as possible for me staying on the friendly side of that investigating Mm -hmm. um, feels really important Mm -hmm. and it's also like I just think about a baby eagle in a nest that it's learning you know Uh there's a readiness involved and that um there's a trusting in the process, you know, like if I try to fly too soon, it's not going to go well. <laughs> and so I just like the, you know, you did say emergence, but you know, even just the, the pace of emergence, I think is, is an interesting thought to me yeah. in this moment. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. nature, right. Nature yeah. just always brings us back to what's, yeah. it brings me back to what's here. So what cradles you is truth, mm-hmm. anger, mm-hmm. Um, and eagle's nests. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. I like it. I like it. I love the just the fascination and the um, immersing yourself in, in the wild. And I think it's really interesting also just that you're so drawn to the path, you know, the, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you for um, naming anger Mm. that has not entered into these conversations. Yeah. So there's plenty of space for that here. Okay. Mm. So what about, do you have a cradle that you can offer us? There is um, one I want to offer really what I want is just to have big soup pots on the stove for everyone. <laughs> like that's what I want to be able to, to offer. Um, but what I do want to share today isn't mine, right? It comes from Padre Gotuama, who's an Irish poet and theologian. Mm-hmm. He's a queer Irish poet and theologian um, that I am so drawn to actually mm-hmm. his language and his there's something about him. And he has this practice of saying hello to whatever is here. Really? And actually, if it's okay, I'm going to actually read his words. Um, I would love it. And then I got, I got some, some to add. Okay. <laughs> and, and will you, um, after this is over, I've okay. never heard of him. And so if you could just give me the story sure. because. Yeah. I actually was looking to see if I had the book right here. And I think okay. I might have taken it home, but sure. Okay. Um, okay. I think the title of this particular book is In the Shelter of Each Other, mm-hmm. which also nice. just makes me smile to say out loud, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so in the book, I'm gonna look over here for a second. Um, he, he quotes David Wagner's poem of um, the place where you are is called here. Mm-hmm. You know, And there's so much, um, he talks about there's so much saying of I wish things were different and I wish I were somewhere else. I wish this mm-hmm. wasn't happening. 
mm -hmm. right? But wherever we are is called here. Um, and, it, and, it, and we must treat it as a powerful stranger, mm. he says. And powerful strangers might be benevolent, but might, but only might, right? Powerful strangers can also be unsettling and troubling. And powerful strangers can have their own hostilities and have their own way within which they cause you to question who you are and where you're from. And that is a way within which, for me, for him, the notion of saying hello to here requires a fairly robust capacity to tell the truth about what's really going on. And so for me, this links back to truth, right? Um, and telling the truth of our experience. And he says, you know, to, to say, here's a day when I feel intimidated, or here's a day when I'm just waiting for the end of it, or here's a day when I have expectations of delight, right? So just being able to say hello to whatever shows up. For me right now, it's saying hello to no longer expecting myself to act with any kind of equanimity right now because I can't find it very, very easily. Um, yeah. It's not very accessible to me um, to just say hello to the parts of us that are un unseen and unheard and maybe unrecognized. Um, and just say hello to the increasing ability maybe to hold ourselves compassionately yeah. and all of our neurosis and all of our glory. And let them let them both exist mm. side by side. Mm. Okay, so I just have to tell you, I'm so happy and surprised by this. Mm. So I am, in addition to having these go out on Facebook, I'm embedding these talks into this month long program called Cradle. Nice. And the very first Cradle was say hello. Are you serious? Mm -mm. Yes, I mean, I'm, okay, I'll I'm send serious. You, I'll send you the, yeah. the link to this book because I think you will love it. Yeah. It'll be so I, Yeah. I, and so, you know, the whole idea of, and really it is a, um, it's an exercise in mindfulness. A hello doesn't suggest that something needs to change. It's, mm -hmm. it's just a, hey, you're here. This oh. is what's here. Yeah. Yeah. It's not easy. Mm -mm. I, don't, I don't claim to remember it most days, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but when I can, but, something shifts. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lightness to, hello. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, is there something that we can practice? Mm -hmm. We can practice saying hello, mm -hmm. you know, to whatever, yeah. whatever is here. Um, I was on a webinar earlier this week with Stacey Haynes from Generative Somatics and, mm. or was it somebody else? No, it was, it was Stacey. And she had a stand up and um, she, so again, this is her practice, not mine, but mm -hmm. she called it uh, one space, two space and three space. So standing up and, and like being in the space of I, which is one space, mm -hmm. and then taking a step back. I'm just going to do it with my chair right now. And that being two space, which is the space of we, so being in relationship with somebody else, and then taking one more step back and being in the, the three space, which is the space of all, right? And so um, I think we can, for me, it was powerful to practice that and getting, again, the mm -hmm. physiological um, or just noticing the way my body participated in what happens when I move from I to we, and we to all and, mm -hmm. and moving back and forth between those spaces. Um, and when, when does I get harder to find if I'm in a we space, mm -hmm. um, how can I come back and, and gather, right. And, and, and bring her along when I'm moving into those other spaces. Mm -hmm. um, if that's a practice that feels like it would be supportive or interesting for people, I've been, I've been having fun playing with it. And so could you just, could you maybe show us, I mean, you kind of yeah. did, but what does that yeah. mean? It literally just means taking a step back, okay. right? And imagining that I'm moving from I mm -hmm. into we. Okay, so kind of naming, I'm moving mm -hmm. into a we space, mm -hmm. okay. And then from we into all, mm -hmm. right? Like the, wow. the, the collective. Um, and, and, you know, and noticing what changes, yeah. um, what changes in thoughts and feelings, what changes in your body as you're moving between those spaces. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What space is more comfortable? What space mm -hmm. is least comfortable? What space, mm -hmm. Stacey asked the question, what space do you have the most ground? Mm -hmm. What space do you lose a little? Um, what happens in the transition between the spaces? Wow. 
That's so interesting. And, and simple, but profound for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that all three spaces always exist and it's just a matter of like moving. Mm -hmm. I like that reorientation, you know, that happens. Yeah. And to track each when you're in, you know, the I space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, that's super interesting. Yeah. And also the practice of playing with shifting your center of gravity. You mm -hmm. know, not so much that you fall all the way off, but, but can I lean forward? And what mm -hmm. happens when I'm doing that? What am I, um, am I leaning away from something? Am I moving towards something? What happens to that sense of I if, I'm, if my center of gravity is really forward? What happens when it's right here? What happens if I'm leaning back from something? Mm -hmm. What happens to my sense of presence mm -hmm. um, as I do that? Mm -hmm. And it's not about one space being okay or one space not being mm -hmm. okay. It's like, can I, um, do I have agency and choice around where my center of gravity is in any moment? And mm -hmm. does it know how to come back to me? Do I know how to bring it back um, mm -hmm. inside of me? Mm -hmm. It's really, I mean, so much of what you've been talking about has been so body centric, you know, in such a, uh, well, it's what you do, but um, it's a really interesting thing to become curious about your center of gravity. You know, I yeah. do that on a, on a yoga mat, but I never think about it. You know, every, I, I think about like, okay, what am I communicating when my arms are crossed and the, you know, the feeling of different postures, but, but it's, it's really interesting to mm -hmm. just kind of keep playing and noticing. Yes. And I noticed letting, that, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, just letting your body inform you. Exactly. Right. I notice that if I'm, if I'm struggling, struggling, uh, maybe that's not even the right word. If I'm paying a lot of attention to a relationship, mm -hmm. with someone with a friend, with a teacher, and it, it could be anybody, um, my center of gravity can shift a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. And so noticing that if I lose access to my knowing in that we mm -hmm. space, I'm combining things right now, you know, that I that I have a way to notice and bring back. And I can even do that just with my body, mm -hmm. not just like it's, you know, I can do that with my body. Um, and then I remember something different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Super interesting. Thank you. Yeah. These are all really cool. That's, and it's a new one for me just this week, actually, uh -huh. to, um, it was so profound to notice. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can come forward and I can come back. Mm -hmm. huh. <laughs> right? Like I can come right back. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Thank you. Um, okay. So this is the fourth question is, okay. do you have, I, and I immediately put you up in an Eagle's nest. Do you have a vision? <laughs> do you have a vision or, a blessing for <laughs> the collective. <laughs> you do have vision. <laughs> you got your eagle cam. <laughs> There's so many metaphors. <laughs> I need to play with. I do. In this, I'll just name what feels like my vision right now in this moment. Mm -hmm. um, I have a wish that all of us could start to orient towards having greater access to our widest, our widest and wisest selves. Mm -hmm. um, I have a vision that we play more in imagination, right? That we, that we pay attention to what our holiest of longings are, mm -hmm. um, that we can hear those little broadcasts from the unconscious, right? That mm -hmm. says, I, I long for this. I want this. I can imagine this. I can imagine something different um, that we can, this might be a practice too. come up with a list of maybes, maybe this, maybe this, maybe this. And that that can become a list of possibilities and that that can, that list of possibilities can feed our imagination about what else mm -hmm. could be here. Mm -hmm. um, I think about the connective power of stories. I know a lot of people are talking about stories right now, but what are the stories that we can create together about something different, like stories of 
um, collective freedom uh, or stories that get bigger, stories that are big enough to accommodate our becoming um, and can, can accommodate everyone's becoming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's my wish. Mm -hmm. I like that. Accommodate everyone's becoming. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Um, it's fun to talk about. I mean, it's fun. Uh, it's fun to be in conversation, right? It's fun to be connective um, and connected. That's one of your words. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of them. <laughs> so, um, oh, I, I feel like I had one more question to you, for you that was unrelated, and it's not with me right now. Um, Okay, so before we end, um, first off, I, I, I want to thank you so much just for giving me and us your time. Thanks for reaching out. To yeah. Um, and I just want to call everybody back to the space. Um, we've traveled all of these different paths and <laughs> up high and back and forth. We've had a lot of movement in this conversation. And so come back to this uh, moment to your body in your chair in the room that you're sitting in and even from wherever you are across time and space i invite you to um, feel our connection and feel um, this community that we are cultivating with carmen crystal cool <laughs> <laughs> so anyway thank you thank and you. um thank you so much um we'll talk soon <laughs>